Pod Talks with Phil Blizzard, talking to business leaders, innovators, sports stars, and celebrities. Well, we're at the uh, Sharjah Entrepreneurship Festival. I've been traveling around, and I've come across two well-known travelers, Omar Sama, Omar Noor. So, Omar 1, Omar 2. So, oh. <laughs> why, why is he Omar 1 already? We're going to have a problem. We're we'll doing it around. Omar 1, Omar 2. <laughs> oh. Rearrange it around. Um, okay, so, um, this festival is buzzing. We're in a, in a special podcast pod. Yeah, we're in a pod, aren't we, guys? I like it. A lot of glass, and we can see what's going on outside. So, what's, uh, Omar Noor, what's been your uh, impressions so far of the festival? Well, i got to be honest, I, I didn't really know what to expect. We've been uh, knee-deep in preparing for our, our speech, right? And, and came in here, and I'm so pleasantly surprised about the buzz. There's such a buzz going around this place, right? It's the kind of place you come to to get inspired, to get motivated. Uh, a lot of really interesting people walking around that you can just start chatting with. It's As I cool. discovered with you two guys here in the pod. So, Emma Samra, we've met before. We met first time we did a radio interview. We're on the lawns of... Uh, Safford Park. Safford Park. Well remembered, well remembered. And you had an organisation which you're still involved with in. It's um, one which creates travel experiences. Well, Guanabana, if I'm Yeah, I'm going to let you try the name. <laughs> you sink. Yeah, but you, you did it perfectly. Yes, Wild Guanabana. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, was that your initial start with entrepreneurship? It was. I mean, I started my business career like in the most unlikely of places, it seems now. I started in investment banking and, and private equity. Because you went to business school, didn't you? Yeah, I went to business school. But before that, that means it's, you wanted to be a tennis player. You well, wanted to be Adrian's Boris yeah, Becker. Great. Great, great memory, because wow. my, my parents wanted me to be a tennis player because I was born in Wimbledon. Aha! And, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that didn't happen. And uh, I was diagnosed with severe chest asthma when I was very young. So you overcame that. You traveled the world, what, like Ibn Bintuta, you might say, or Marco Polo, 370 days, wasn't it? Exactly, 370 days uh, across, like, 13 countries. And uh, But my dream, since I was 16, was to, to climb to the top of Mount Everest. Which you uh, achieved. Which I achieved in, uh, when I was 28. and was that, that 2007, 2008? 2007, 2007, exactly. And, you know, for me, this was like, a, you know, the rite of passage for me because I'd been dreaming about it for so long. Mm. And, you know, the fact that I was asthmatic, I, for a long time, I never thought that I could do anything That's like that. That's amazing, to be able to climb Everest, uh, having suffered from asthma. Now, I'll come back to a, a bit more travel in a moment because I said we've got two travellers here. Um, <laughs> Noor, what about your background? Because... Well, we haven't met before? No, we have not. We have not. But, um, you know, I started off, um, I'm Egyptian, you know, raised in Switzerland, then went to the U.S., and I studied medicine. So I went to Johns Hopkins University. I was supposed to be a doctor. And, you know, I think as, an, as a, you know, an Arab male, you have uh, three options, you know, a right. doctor, a lawyer, or failure. And so, <laughs> no, no. yeah, yeah, so your parents don't, ask, you know, necessarily question you too hard about, about medicine, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But then after I graduated, I decided, realized, you know what, maybe that's not the right thing for me. And that's actually when I delved into business. Age 21, I started my first business, uh, failed miserably. Uh, got back up, did it again, and my brother and I have been doing businesses uh, basically ever since. We want to get from you in this podcast some challenges which you faced and overcame on your business route, but uh, uh, let's move on. What, when it comes to travel, Omar Noor, what, what, are you, what have you done? Well, it's not, you know, my background is sports, so basically what I ended up doing is, is one of those businesses that we were just chatting about, right, uh, became severely overweight, ripped two suit pants getting into the car, and that led me to a triathlon. What weight so were you? I was 105 kilos. Uh, of pure fat, and I was getting into the car, and I just heard. <laughs> yep. Now this is um, audio. This is like radio, so I have to describe. You are very tall, very what would you say? Very lean. Where's Thank you. Fat? No, Where's not anymore. Is? Thank you. I really appreciate it. Right. I, I actually, I turned. I, I ended up turning a professional triathlete at age 31, when most people because are retiring. retiring. Yeah. Um, I became uh, the first ever Egyptian professional triathlete representing Egypt on the Olympic circuit, and. Um, and, you know, that was a, I had an 80-year uh, career where I was aiming to go to the Olympic Games, right? Uh, the right. 2016 uh, Olympic Games. Uh, injured myself six months out, and that's actually that's how... I came into the picture. Yeah. That's, okay, tell us how that came about. So, Omar and I were friends for a few years. Um, I was sitting on a plane, you know, crossing the Atlantic yeah. on, a, on a plane, sitting by the window seat watching a movie, looking at the vast ocean below. 
And then this crazy idea pops in my head, how cool would it be to cross that ocean, but without the use of a sail or a motor, right? Mm. And then that yeah, idea yeah. wouldn't go away. And I knew that I didn't have maritime experience, I couldn't do it alone. I knew that you know, the best way to do it is on a four-man team, that's what the research says. But finding three people with the time, the grit, the tenacity, the, the work ethic, it was impossible. But then I thought, you know, what if I could find that just one guy, and this guy had just been training for like six to eight years, six hours a day, and I was like, and he, and he couldn't make the Olympics because of the injury, and I was like, I can use it. Time to pounce. Yeah, I, I, I wish you just went back to watching the film. <laughs> <laughs> So that's how you two got together. Yeah. How did it evolve to enable you to completely, yeah, you know, complete that crossing? So actually, I mean, we're both entrepreneurs. Our businesses take so much of our time, but for the year and a half, we had to almost put the businesses on the side. I mean, we had teams that running. We were still doing things in parallel, but we had to dedicate so much because we thought there was going to be a lot of similarities between professional sports and you know I'm a mountain climber polar adventure we thought this is all about endurance mm. but we found out that you know ocean rowing is a completely different animal we had to reinvent our bodies um, to, to you know to make it suitable for that kind of thing we had to learn everything under the sun from how to navigate you know sea survival so many things um, so that we can just get to the start line so and I gotta admit actually if I can just add yeah, sure. one of the things that, that uh, was was an interesting byproduct of this was uh, the businesses had to grow. The businesses all of a sudden had to grow because we were forced. You know when you're hanging out your business like, oh, it can't operate without me. All of a sudden, we had to do two-week mm. stints of rowing. So you had to, to delegate, <laughs> right? You had to find solutions. And actually, it was very beneficial. Did for you have businesses. any connectivity with your teams from, from your rowboat in the middle of the Atlantic? No, oh, no. no. Once, no. no, no. That's, that's it. it. And that's, that, that's what made it grow, right? That pressure. Is, if I tell you, you have absolutely zero connectivity starting six months from now, what would you do differently about your business? I think that makes things very, very different, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You set them up differently, you think differently, you just want to remove yourself from the equation as quickly as possible. And we have multiple businesses, so it's quite tricky to, to make it happen on all of them, right? I just want to go back on one point, what you were saying about the changing your body to do this massive uh, uh, challenge. I mean, you sat down a lot of the time, aren't you? Yeah, yeah absolutely. That, yeah. What's the I mean, impact we, of that? We, we thought... Coming in, we thought it's about endurance, right? Like mm. we're gonna be, and, and that was gonna work for us because we're both endurance athletes. At the end of the day, it wasn't sort of cardiovascular endurance; it was muscle endurance. So when you take an oar stroke, you had to dis you had to be able to do it 12 hours a day each, but also you have to be extremely strong to displace as much water as possible yeah, in the sure. oar stroke. So yeah. it was a completely different thing. So we had to change. For being sort of endurance athletes, be, be so, so how many strokes in a twelve-hour shift? Oh, jeez, <laughs> oh, thousands. Yeah. What about? I mean, talk about the physical aspect. What about the mental aspect as well? I mean, the vastness of the ocean and the fact there's only the two of you. Huge. I mean, the, the the magnitude of the idea, you know, it's almost impossible to get your head around. I remember getting out of the port, and then when we sort of faced the ocean mm. for the first time, getting into the race, and then a few hours later clearing the islands and all the sort of land and then it was just us you know two people in a seven by two meter boat mm. maybe for the next few weeks it's the realization starts to set in no matter how much you prepare how much you think it's yeah. going to be like the reality is always going to be different so Omar Noah taking you from that very confined uh well, we're in a very confined part of the boat. This is spacious. <laughs> this is spacious <laughs> compared to our boat. Oh, it's about two meters by two meters. Not even that, I don't think. So you went from that, and today you went on to a big stage yeah. here at yeah. the festival. Yeah. So uh, what was the reaction from all these people attending? And there's a real mix of people, isn't it? Age-wise, background in terms of business and uh, cultures, of course. So You know, I think um, we are at a entrepreneurship festival, mm. right? And so it's, it's interesting to bring, uh, you know, adventurers and athletes and and. And, and just, you know, keynote speak uh, in front of, a, of an audience. Sure. But the, the thing that came very naturally to Omar and I is we run businesses. We have to put food on the table. We have to figure it out, right? And we do not separate. We do not change the way we are in business and then adventure and sport. The same philosophies across all of these disciplines apply. And I think it came across today. Um, the audience was amazing. I really enjoyed the positive response. Um, they gave me goosebumps at the end coming afterwards to talk about like 
how they thought they were in, uh, inspired by by some of our of what we said, and that's the, the point at the end of the day. At the end of the day, yeah. if we come and do something like that, and one person gets inspired, well, it took a long person. time to you, for you to get from the stage to the podcast, and we're not that far away. We're the other side <laughs> of the central atrium, yeah. so you would stop, and lots of people talking to you, wanting photos, selfies, and asking questions. So, what sort of questions were they asking? I think people were asking a lot about the parallels between you know entrepreneurship and between the adventures. Um, I think a lot of people were also not asking questions. They were basically saying how they you know had this idea, how they were stuck, and you know the, the talk gave them a lot of energy. Yeah. Um, and then they're gonna you know go back and tackle those same things with a different perspective, and that really makes us happy, right? Because that's really what it is, and, it, and it's kind of it's it's paying back, right? Because we attend. I mean, I attend a lot of these entrepreneurship events. I've attended them over the last decade quite a lot. Yeah, sure. And you know, I, a lot of the times I'm on the receiving end, and I come here because there's some people that you read about, or maybe you've heard the story, and you're always not sure whether you know the reality is going to really match with the things. But the, the, the beauty of these types of events that people tend to be quite approachable, and of they course. have time for you, and yeah. you can sit there and talk. So yeah. it was very important for us to give back in the sense of making ourselves available because then if there's something in it for us as well you know and we're we're um, enjoying the interaction i want to step ahead in a moment and look at uh, future adventures business and otherwise but uh, this is a festival for entrepreneurs and a lot of young entrepreneurs or people thinking of taking the path of, of that so Omar, um, what advice would you pass on to those thinking of taking this, what can be, it seems a, a great route to run your own business, but so many challenges along the way. What Look, advice? I mean, one of the things that I always said is, um, you know, when people see you cross the finish line first, they say, that's awesome, that's what I want to do. I want to be yeah. that, right? It's the same thing in business. I want to own my own business, right? Don't let uh, yourself be disillusioned. It is not glamorous. When the spotlights go away, when you're not at one of these things, when it's calm and quiet, it's a lot of hard work and dedication. Mm. But if you yourself can prepare for that and know that it is hard, you know you're not alone, and yes, failure is part of the process, then in my opinion, it makes you bolder. One of my favorite quotes is success is going from failure to failure with good attitude. And I that's think what it's about. in some ways, that's where perhaps you've got the advantage. You've had that discipline as a professional athlete and that same sort of discipline required for uh, entrepreneurship. Very and much so. Omar, same with you. Not yeah. so much so competitive sportsmanship, but as an adventurer, a great adventurer, dedicated to walking 370 days is unbelievable. So, so think of that. Yeah, I mean, figure I mean, that out. I, I compare it to you know some of my most memorable adventures. You know, climbing Mount Everest, skiing to the North Pole, the South Pole, climbing the highest mountain on every continent. The thing about adventures, <laughs> the list goes on. <laughs> is, the, is the unknown, right? It's it's entering into situations where you have almost no control. I mean, we talked about it today. You know, one yeah. of the most seemingly kind of demotivating things is to say that 99% of anything that happens in the world is out of your control, right? But actually, it's most one of the most inspiring things because the sooner you get to realize that you have no control and the universe is so big and you're just a mere speck, yeah. that you, all you have to do is just let go of that 99% and you just focus all your energy on the 1%, which is what are you going to do every single day? You just do your best. And if you can bring it down to that, and you know, some days you're going to be ahead, some days you're going to be behind, but if you're able to be ahead more days than not, then in my mind, you've already succeeded. I'm a great fan of uh, what you've been doing, and also when it comes to competitive sport, what I like most of all, I suppose, is cycling and the Tour de France, oh. and from the UK, the Sky Team. The, the manager there, the team, David Brailsford, is known for his thoughts on incremental improvements, small bits at a time, and add those all together, and you get the big big change. That's, right? the big that's all endurance sports is all about exactly what you just yeah, said. Yeah. And actually, if you like cycling, one of the companies that we, we own is... Uh, a bike company. Okay. Yeah. yeah more sort of um, aspects. When it comes Ventum. So Ventum is, oh, we, yeah. we manufacture the fastest uh, time trial bike in the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. And we are the first ever um, global bike partner of Ironman. So that's my okay. brother. Okay, fantastic. My brother, yeah. So going on to the business side now. So uh, Omar, continue about the bikes. What other businesses are you involved in? Uh, we, we, have a, we have a bunch, but the, the bike business is based out of the U.S., right? Uh, we introduced it to the to the Middle East about um, a year ago, actually, yeah. and it's pretty amazing. It's thoughts. booming here. It's Phenomenal. booming. It's it's huge. But and the idea is, we 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 want to we want to revolutionize it. We want to be sort of the Tesla of bikes, going straight to the consumers, making it experiential based, yeah. making it app based, making it completely different than what it used to be. Um, we also have a distribution company here in Dubai. I don't know if you've heard of uh, On Shoes. On Shoes 
is um, it's been on the news quite uh, a lot recently because of Roger Federer having bought a bunch, of, uh, a big chunk of it, and okay. it going public. But yeah. uh, so we have eighteen different brands that, including on, uh, that we represent and distribute across the the Middle East. So that's 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 on the hardcore business front, yeah. and then there's I'm, a lot, bunch I'm of things. Staying staying with business, so Omar, uh, you're doing the what should we say, travel experiences, unique ones, yeah, I mean, uh, what else? Yeah, so when we met, I think before Wild Gone Up, it was just the one brand, so we were doing the, you know, the ethical sort of uh, crazy yeah. adventure tours all around the world, and then we start, we launched another brand called Morikata Camps, and that's basically doing the same thing, but for youth and for kids, um, and we recently launched Ultra Egypt, which is like taking people on long distance running experiences, so mm. 50, 100 kilometers in the desert and mountains, and um, and the last um, the most recent uh, company that I started it's called Imagine If and it's this is about uh, raising awareness about climate change yeah, uh, yeah. and about all the challenges facing. The what about climate. adventures here? We've got the fabulous Hajar Mountains not far away. I mean, there's a lot of potential there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And especially there's a great I don't know if you're familiar going from like Russell Kamer over to the east coast side, uh, Wadi B. It's like yeah. miniature Grand Canyon. Fabulous. Yeah, Wadi B. Yeah. 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 So the, so the, you remember the the Wadi B B race that yeah. happens every year. So. That's sort of the kind of thing that we were actually inspired by that and, and we were doing okay. something similar in Egypt. Yeah, okay. So, future-wise, I mean, you're, you're on the route to go into space, aren't well, you? I just got married. That's a big adventure. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did that work with uh, going off uh, around the world for 200 days or whatever you might plan well, in the future? I mean, she, she, sort of, she sort of found me as, a, as an adventure. So, uh, the sort Excellent. Of part of the experience. Yeah. But, but you're right. I mean, you, you've got an excellent memory, actually. And uh, space is still... You know, my big, big dream, it's still out there. I, I, in 2013, I won an international competition. You know, the two million people had applied. Yeah. I was one of the winners to go into space in 2017. Uh, that company, unfortunately, ended up going bust. I mean, you know, space is such a, a difficult sector to crack. Of course. Um, but, I'm, you know, I'm still at it. I've done all the astronaut training. So, you know, I'm just hoping for that, Brilliant. that one shot. Brilliant. We could talk for hours. We could talk for hours. <laughs> and as I said, we're not far from the central plaza, just behind us. That's a hub of activity away from the more formal uh, conference settings, you might say. Uh, music there, sort of uh, seminars, all sorts going on. So that's, uh, you can hear in the background, we're talking about uh, capturing the atmosphere. People would say, don't you want somewhere where it's quiet? <laughs> no, no, no. We want the noise of yeah, the atmosphere, people walking by and music Absolutely. and so on. So, uh, Omar Nord, what about you, future wise? Look, I mean, it's interesting. I'm, I'm not married yet, but I am engaged. So so, so that's, that's on the personal level. And then um, on the business level, for me, like really focusing this experience that we experienced together, Omar, and almost, uh, you know, not making it, uh, sort of uh, rejigged my uh, potential right. priorities, right? right? And right now I'm enjoying growing the businesses. But also Omar and I are talking about different things, you know, about like, uh, you know, we did the film, the documentary, and this is an interesting path that we may want to start to explore more and more. Mm. We're talking about... A podcast, actually, uh, funny enough, and there we go. and one something that's interesting. We want to make the podcast in Arabic uh, about yeah, beyond the regency as well, yeah. right? So okay. there's, there's going to be that public persona side of things, and we're not sure how, what, where that's going to go. But definitely the business is, you know, that's that's where my focus is at the and moment. And regarding what everyone's gone through over the last eighteen months or so, there's light at the end of the tunnel now. So I mean, otherwise this event would not be happening for a start. So and also we've gained things like remote. Um, for my side, remote recording. Yeah, I mean, so many podcasts linked up yeah. with people all over yeah. the place, yeah. multiple yeah. people in different locations. It's been uh, uh, quite an eye-opener in terms of what you can do remotely. You don't have to all necessarily be together, but it's great having face-to-face -face yeah. podcasts <laughs> after such a long time. Yeah, it's true, it's very true. Yeah, and I'd like to thank you two guys. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here for this thank podcast series us. at yeah. the festival. Very thank fun, you so thank you. And uh, Omar Nort, nice to see you. To very nice up. to meet and, you. Uh, Omar... Great to see you after our first encounter on the park in Safa, on the grass, very laid back, very really chilled out. And this place is very chilled out as well. So. Thank you so much. and look forward to meeting you again. Great stuff. Thanks, Thanks. guys. Bye. Pod Talks is a Phil Blizzard Media production. And if you'd like to have your own podcast, do drop me an email on philblizzardmedia at gmail.com. A Phil Blizzard radio production. Pod Talks is available on Apple, Amazon, Angami, Spotify, Deezer, Google and all good podcast channels and also now on YouTube 